All right, this is going to be a look at how Pat Ricard impacted the Ravens' win over the Patriots in Week 3. I really think that the game changed after two huge run blocks by Pat Ricard on consecutive plays, I think on the Ravens' second drive, second possession. Daniel Falele was having trouble with Wise, clearly. I think Wise had three sacks in the first 15 or 18 plays, something like that. These two run blocks that Ricard had, I think, really changed the game for the edge players for the Patriots. Of course, I think some of the Ravens' schematic adjustments and changes um, also impacted the, you know, Judon and Wise because we were running option stuff at them. So now instead of attacking, they kind of had to read and react. What we're going to do here is look at his impact in the game, uh, his one reception as well, and then kind of some ways that he was used in the past, in the past game, and how on his big second and 13 reception, um, on that same drive, I believe, uh, Ricard, the tendency for the manner in which we use Ricard in the pass game actually helps him out a lot. And and one of the Patriots DBs, I think it's number five, his awareness, his probably film study in terms of where Ricard goes after chip, chipping the D end actually works against him. So look, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not one of those people that thinks Pat Ricard um, has a huge impact on our offense all the time. I'm not, certainly not a Pat Ricard hater. I mean, he's carved out a great career playing two sides of the football. There's a very few people have ever done that. So an unbelievable NFL career. Uh, nothing but respect for him. Glad he's a Raven. Uh, wish that, you know, we were using some of our other assets a little more, to be honest with you. But having said that, I have to recognize when he plays super well. Now, to be honest with you, this is my perception of how he had been playing prior to week three. Uh, this is a first and 10, a diamond formation. And he gets zero movement or push on Ingram, who is playing like a madman right now for the Dolphins. I said something in a video a couple of weeks ago about a weeks ago about Ingram, and I was really wrong. <laughs> I did not think that he was going to be playing this well, and he has been balling. So Ricard here is going to take on Ingram and get set back in the backfield himself. You know, get no push. It's like a stretch, stretch pull play. So. Uh, Powers is overlapping the left tackle, Makari. So Makari is going to take on this D tackle. Powers is going to overlap to presumably go get this strong safety. And then the backside fullback, which is Oliver. You can see Oliver. Look how close he is to, to Lamar. That kind of gives away, to be honest with you, the intention of the play, the direction at least. Oliver is going to go try to get this Mike linebacker. It is Ricard's job to take on the edge player, get some expansion. We're trying to run, basically we're turning this into a stretch concept. And Ricard gets blown up. Look at the contact occurring when Ricard's feet are, are you know, off the ground. He's, does, he's not same foot, same shoulder, more power. He's not ready for the contact. Kind of blows him up a little bit. Ingram makes the tackle in the backfield. My perception was that his blocking was not um, really being that devastating so far. And I couldn't have been more wrong in terms of the Patriots game. You know, he did have this third and one. Uh, you know, sneak essentially, you know, fullback dive up the middle where he powered for five yards. He almost breaks out of here, to be honest with you. He's kept his feet. He keeps his feet a lot longer than, you know, I thought, you know, on this pl on this particular play. Dolphins were not ready for it. Dolphins were expecting sneak or something like that by the quarterback. And Ricard's able to run through the pile, um, almost emerge out of it, to be honest with you. You can see he's planting his hand on the ground. Don't think the knee is down yet, so he's trying to get back up, and he's just unable to do so because there's so many bodies in there. Okay, how had we he been used in the past, though, in the past game? What was he asked to do? What were we effective at? Well, we've had at least three instances. One, Minnesota at home, week nine last year, or maybe it was week eight. Another, the Tennessee playoff game down in Tennessee, first drive of the third quarter. Ricard would do things like this, chip the D end, and then slide out into the flats for easy completion. Some of these teams, like Minnesota, the Bengals, even a little bit of the Bills, to be honest with you, they're committed to two high safety uh, structures and playing you know, a lot of split field coverages where they're reading the release of the receivers. So stuff like this, that's late release, actually kind of messes with the corner and the safety's read because they're reading the initial release of the receivers and then determining how to match up to that initial release. And when you have a delayed release, that actually can be effective, in my opinion, sometimes against these coverages. Now, this is a third and 14, so uh, Minnesota was playing a soft coverage anyway, so it really didn't kind of matter You know what coverage they played. There's Ricard, left-hand side here. 
He actually had three catches on this drive, very reminiscent of that first drive of the third quarter against the Titans uh, down in Tennessee. Of course, Lamar had tied it 10 all with his touchdown scramble late in the second quarter. And then I think we go down and take a 17-10 lead, first drive of the third quarter, and Ricard has three. Actually, some people referred to it as the Pat Ricard drive. Again, chipping the DN and then sliding out into the flats. The design of this is such that you have Duve running a wheel route here, kind of clearing out this corner from any flats coverage because he's got to match that, that deeper concept. And then you can see Ricard has just slid out into the flats. The inside linebacker's got to try to recover. Again, that chip, that chip late release can actually impact some of these teams that play these split field coverages. And one of the things we, that we should talk about is the Bills play a lot of split. In my opinion, they play split field coverages. They're in two high safety structures, and they're, they're route reading, they're, they're pattern reading. And stuff like this, we could get Ricard laid out. into. Is it going to happen six times? Well, no. You know, the Bills are too good defensively. They'll adjust. But it could certainly happen two, three, four times, just like you see in this game against Minnesota. Well, these were all on the same drive. And then, you know, just like occurred in that Tennessee playoff game, would it happen early in the game? No, it would probably be things whereby, you know, we take advantage of the coverage as the game goes on. But this is a fourth and goal, and this is the play we went to. This is not a read by Lamar at all. You can see that the mesh is, you know, inconsequential. And he's throwing the ball out here to Ricard. I don't know that we have another part of this read. I mean, maybe this is the secondary part of it. So the coaches trust him, whether we do. You know, we shouldn't distrust him because he's made a lot of plays for us. But some of the things he did in the Patriots game, to to be honest with you, uh, caught me by surprise. Got to give got to give big up some props to him. Okay, so this is a stretch concept. When you get the end zone angle, you're going to see something crazy pre snap, uh, and this is just as crazy, if not more so, post snap. I mean, that's our fullback putting Wise, who's a badass D end, on his back. And and whether the play, first of all, Tyler Linderbaum and Justice Hill do a great job on this stretch play. You know, we're, get, we're getting people moving horizontally. And Linderbaum is able to stretch this thing out here, help out with the D-tackle, and then peel downfield to go get, I think, the Mike linebacker, Bentley. And you'll see that Hill takes his cut off of Linderbaum, who's right here. And Bentley, he goes and gets Bentley, pushes him back. Watch the end zone angle here for Ricard versus Wise. This is actually the second time. Wise has done this already in the game. <clears throat> I think this is the Ravens' sixth drive, so our first drive of the third quarter. Wise is pointing at Pat Ricard right now. He, he's not communicating to his teammates. He's not. He did this on a pass play earlier, and I can prove it to you by clicking the button one more time. Watch what he does next. He just told Pat Ricard, go ahead, line up here. We got what he wanted. And earlier in the game, he had done that on a pass play. And then he swam Ricard, like made Ricard miss horribly. Not this time. That really changed the that really changed part of the game, if you ask me. We started to be able to run. Well, we were running the counter windback stuff already against them anyway. But this was huge, a direct run play stretch. So we're not fooling you. We're attacking with our linemen. We're attacking. Linderbaum's going to get off and then go get this Mike Backer. This is direct, full force right at you. And Pat Ricard supplanted that starting D end on his back. That's a pretty unbelievable play. Got to give credit where credit is due. <clears throat> Very next play. Again, drive six. We're on a second and one. This is one where he's going to log Judon and then plant him on the ground as well. Judon's trying to wrong arm it, kind of fit inside on the inside shoulder of Ricard because he, he understands the concept. It's, it's supposed to be a kick out block by Ricard. And then, and then a wrap by the backside guard. So essentially, you're talking about windback power. It works out a little bit like F counter because Lamar is opening this way. And the, the, the point of attack is back to the other side. We end up bouncing it. Why? Because Judon wrong arms it. That's the whole point. That's the, why I'm bringing it up. Judon's just not ready to take on the block. Remember what I talked about Ricard's feet on that play against Ingram against the Dolphins. Same thing with Judon. Judon's just not ready to take this on. Looks like wrong arm is not something that the Patriots do a ton of because he certainly wasn't comfortable while doing it. It's two pancakes in a row. Kind of. I mean, that's rare. That's rare, if you ask me. I just don't – in all the film that I watch of the Ravens, mostly, obviously, and then of other teams, I don't remember seeing one person get two pancakes 
in two consecutive. Now, look, does Judon get his feet hung up with an offensive lineman? Sure. But he's already lost the block, number one. And number two, he's being driven back. That's why he ends up, you know, on Power's feet. So, yes, it has something to do with Power's foot being there, no doubt. But two pancakes in a row by Patrick Ricard, that's notable. That's real impact. And we shouldn't minimize it, especially if we're the type of people who want to see the Ravens in 11 personnel a lot more, which is where the NFL is going. And the Ravens at this point are in 11 personnel, I think the least amount out of anybody in the league, 8 or 9% overall. Maybe it's 11%. Correct me if I'm wrong if you're aware of it. All right, third and 15 later, in the um, earlier in the game, excuse me, this is drive number three. He's going to chip the DN, Judon, and then try to slip out here into the flats. Now it happens to be man at this point, though. Okay, so it's not a, a not necessarily a split field coverage like uh, like you get from the Bills, the Bengals, and teams like that. You do have a safety who's dropped down to the low hole here, and you have an inside linebacker who appears to have nobody to cover. But this looks like man. This looks like man. And this looks like man. So a somewhat unique coverage by the Patriots here. All right, so this guy's supposed to be guarding Oliver. Oliver stays into block. And that's why it doesn't look like man. So this is man free. Bill 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 Belichick has been a man free guy for decades, dating back to the Giants in the '80s. And it's third down here, and they're in man free. Ricard is running the under after chipping. You can see he kind of falls down. We don't target him. This is the one where Lamar scrambles, tries to hit Andrews. Andrews is pissed off at himself because he he thinks he missed an opportunity to make a play. Point being, earlier in the game, Ricard had chipped and then ran across the field from right to left typically his impact in the pass game is to chip like he is here and then just like i showed you in the vikings game you know slide out to the to the flats to the right side to the outside of the offense in this case he runs underneath a drag theoretically you could say he's open but the the, the point isn't this play the point is the next one and this was a huge play ricard same position Patriots, same coverage, second and 13. I think you got man free. Man, man trail, man, man. You got a low hole dropper. You got the free safety in the middle of the field who is there in that position right now because he's worried about Mark Andrews. That's why we're going to get, we're getting so many one on ones for Rashad Bateman because safeties are worried about Andrews running that over concept. But in any case, Ricard chips and runs across the field. Why is this guy beat so badly? Watch what he does. After Ricard chips, I'm going to try to use the slow mo function here and let you guys see it. So, we're talking about this DB right here. He false stepped, he went this way. Why? Because that's what film showed Ricard doing after chipping. Earlier in the game, however, like I showed you, he chips and then runs underneath. So, this is a nice little adjustment. By the Ravens. Actually, this is the second drive. My apologies. The, the one, previous one I just showed you is the third drive. So there's two different times in the game where he chips and runs underneath and we're open against man free. No, he's not beating that guy man to man like running a particular route. But this is a great little adjustment by us. Yes, we've got the option of Andrews. You know, we'd love to see us uh, take shots with Bateman, you know, depending on who's guarding him. But this is a nice little option if Ricard is going to be on the field. Have to give him credit. Two pancake blocks in the game. Helped out in pass pro. I think had a big impact there. And here you have a 12-yard uh, a gain on second and 13. Forgive me for that play starting so soon. I had to cut this video a lot. So here's Ricard chipping. And then we're talking about this defender. Watch him hedge outside. It's Jabril Peppers. Because that's where, see the, see the pressure on his left foot? Pull it back a little bit so you can see it. He's used to, from the film that they studied probably, Ricard chipping and then going out into the flats. So that's what he's expecting is going to happen. Instead, Ricard just continues, and look how badly Peppers is beat. Now, if you line them up for one-on-ones, like people talk about with receivers, you know, does Ricard beat Jabril Pepper? No, he doesn't beat him one-on-one, -on -one, you know, in a man situation at all. But this is, you know, scheme. This is situational football. And Pat Ricard had a huge impact in Sunday's win. Didn't score, you know, a touchdown. Only had one reception. Didn't have any carries as a runner, obviously, and he's not going to get many of those. We know that. But had a huge impact with his two blocks. I think uh, changed the game in a lot of ways for us. And multiple guys changed the game. Every There's multiple guys who deserve credit 
I think Pat Pat Ricard deserves credit, you know, for playing his role and playing it very well on Sunday. And I have to give him credit, even though me personally, I'd like to see Proche likely Demarcus Robinson on the field more than Pat Ricard. But um, Pat Ricard proved his worth against the Patriots. Let me know what you think of his play. First of all, if you agree with my sentiment that he played quite well. Uh, and, and if you agree with the way I broke down the plays, if you think there's any missing elements to what I've talked about, I think it's particularly interesting, the play when Wise calls him over there, points at the ground, like, come on over here and get some, and then Ricard gives it to him. That uh, that was a unique moment, and I think it's difficult for the defense, it's particularly Wise, to go back in the huddle and maintain his level of uh, pride and masculinity after he just called for it, got what he wanted, and then got put on his back. Interesting play, interesting turn of events for the Ravens uh, to get the running game going. Lamar had a huge impact, obviously, in the run game. But other guys, Justice Hill, J.K. Dobbins, to a lesser extent, had some impact as well. Let me know what you think of uh, Ricard's contribution on Sunday and if you think it's going to be something that we're going to continue to see moving forward.